What's going on people? Back with a bang. This is the Money Management back here to bring you guys another video today. So we have officially finished July trading and Monday we begin August trading. Monday, August 1st. As you can see, we have a few different interesting earnings, but the real earnings upcoming this week are Tuesday. AMD, PayPal, Uber, Caterpillar, BP, SoFi, Airbnb, Starbucks, JetBlue, Oxy. There's just so many out there. Now in today's video, I'm going to analyze some charts, talk about bits of news which could affect some of these plays and also some other stocks which are out there. But before we get into that today, before we jump into those, I would like to ask, as always, please that you drop that thumbs up button. It is definitely appreciated when I make these videos. But like I was saying, this week is an interesting week for earnings. Tuesday is the day I'm really looking at because before the bell and after the bell, we have plenty to trade. Obviously, Wednesday, you can see we've got Moderna, CVS, MRO, Under Armour as well. We've also got the mighty Robinhood and also the non-forgotten Lucid. Thursday, Alibaba, which we will touch on briefly later on in this video, AMC, Fubo TV, definitely on my radar. And then Friday, DraftKings is the only one I'm really looking at. OCGN is not really making that much noise anymore. So let's jump into the charts and have a look at what we can see for this upcoming week. I'm logging on to TradingView, and you guys probably know by now, if you've been around here, that TradingView is the platform I use to look up charts and analyze charts. So like I said, Tuesday we have AMD earnings. So I want to start off by looking at AMD. Another reason I want to look at AMD first is because I actually took a swing trade for calls from Thursday into Friday. So that was one of my, I think my best player this week, got up to almost 170% returns. It was a $92 call. As you can see, Thursday AMD was hovering around $90. It had fallen just below actually, briefly, and it started up trending. I took a swing into the next day, highlighted it in the Discord, let everybody know what I was doing. And we made great money off that. So it was a great trade and one I was definitely proud of because swing trading in this market is not exactly the easiest thing to do. But I had my levels drawn out. It broke above, resistance zones pushed up, still below my support. And the potential was there for a great swing. Just realized I didn't actually analyze what I'm looking at for this upcoming week. So tech tech sector has been a bit weak over the past few months. But in more recent times, let's say the last two weeks or so, it's gotten a lot stronger. So I want to see if AMD can break that $95 level. If I remember correctly from last earnings, it ran up very high and I think something similar may happen this earnings. Here we go. That was that jump last earnings. There you go. So it's essentially something similar could happen this time. Like I said, I want to look at Walmart as well because I touched on Walmart in the Discord yesterday. Day trade for a $131 call, which was a day trade. Contracts were $0.12 cents. I ran up to highs of around $0.79. Cents. So it was like a 480% return on that. See that crazy green candle yesterday from Walmart? Past four days after the bad earnings, or not even bad earnings, sorry, the bad news that was announced Monday, past four days have been incredible. Great comeback. Those are the stocks I love trading. When they fall heavily, big companies which have so much potential for return. Walmart has bounced back quickly to the same price as it was just a week ago after a crazy $11 drop in one day. Also, I did point out 132 swings for Walmart are on the cards. As you can see right now, it's already at 132. If we look at yesterday's chart, go to the 30 minute chart. This is very clear. Very early, I pointed out when it was around 129, I was looking at 131 day call expiring yesterday and then 132 for next week. It's already passed both of those price targets. So now let's see what happens in the run up to around 132.82. If it breaks above, that could be potential for calls. If it gets rejected, at the current levels or around 132.80, then we can look at puts back down to, let's say, around 128, high 128s, $129 range. All right, next up, we're going to go with Uber, ticker symbol UBER. They announced earnings Tuesday as well. So Uber at $23 right now. Let's check the daily chart to see how it's trended over the last few months. So since May, it's obviously dropped heavily. Last earnings, it dropped heavily. There was a gap, well, a couple gaps down. And since then, we have recovered. It looks like there was a double bottom or even a triple bottom right here, which started the uptrend, trending just above both of these moving averages, which is a nice sign, which means I could look at calls on the break above around 23.45. Honestly, we're right at that level. Maybe about 23.50. This is the level I look for right here. 
at 23.54. Above that, calls, first price target would be around just around $25. Second price target, we're looking at this zone here, 26.05. So that'll be it for Uber. Obviously, if it gets rejected at this level or starts downtrending at this level, breaks below the moving average, look at puts down to potentially $20.70, $20.00 around there. Now moving on, we're gonna look at DDOG, Datadog. So Datadog's earnings is Thursday. Last few days were green, three days before that were red. It closed above the moving average yesterday, which is a good sign. But if you zoom out on this chart, look at the trend from this year. If we draw a trend line, we can see the struggles. If you draw a trend line like that, now you can see what I mean. We could get rejected here, but if we break above here, we could see a great breakout seeing us push to highs of around 115 in this daily resistance zone, potentially even higher. So that is something to look out for. See this trend line here, and it honestly goes further back. We're still below that trend line, so we're still bearish. But if we break above this trend line, we could see a nice breakout. And I've traded this before. You've seen it with AMD. You've seen it with a couple other stocks. When you have trend lines like this, especially after something what seems a triple bottom here, could be a good sign for calls. Next up, I'm going to go with Alibaba, ticker symbol BABA. So some news broke yesterday that they are one of the stocks which could get delisted from the SEC list, which is why you see it dropped 11%. Alibaba has had its troubles over the past 15 to 18 months with Chinese government regulations, with potential news of it getting delisted. Those kind of rumors have hurt the stock. And I think there's a lot more downside for this week upcoming. Now, looking at this daily chart, one of my first price targets for Alibaba to the downside would be around 82.26 to that daily support. If it does fall below that, we could be looking at the 70s. We could be looking even lower than that, which I don't expect. This level here, this level would be my first price target, the 82s. Second level would be around just under $80. And I also want to look at Caterpillar, ticket symbol CAT, as they announced earnings Tuesday as well, before the bell. So Caterpillar has been very strong of late, finished the second half of July extremely strong after struggling the 1st of July. A lot of bullish flow for this one as well. So calls are on the radar, calls are on watch. As you can see, it's trending just below. This moving average, the 100-day moving average, it's broken out of the daily support, broken out of the daily resistance, and now breaking out of the weekly support. So it could still be on the rise, which I expect it to do. That's a great 5.5% gain that it had yesterday. And like I said, I expect more green this upcoming week, especially Monday. So that could be one to trade for calls on Monday, especially. It's a pretty simple game. If it gets rejected here and starts downtrending below the weekly support, then look at puts below around 194.14. And who knows how far it could drop. I mean, that's probably more of a day trade, I'd say. Caterpillar is not one stock that I trade a lot. But just like many other stocks all over the market right now, it's had a very bearish year. Here it was up here, 229. It's actually recovered very well in this part of July with about a $30 gain. So yeah, we'll see if that run can continue. Next up, I'm going to look at Square or Block, ticker symbol SQ. So I was actually looking at puts for this during this week, but I had a bullish week. Now it's at 76.06, trending above the moving averages. I would love to see it hold above this moving average because that could be a nice potential for a couple day swing here. Square is one though that can move pretty volatile, so you have to be aware of that. On the other hand, if it stays around this level, it keeps getting rejected around the 76.76 level, look at puts because that could be a double top here on the daily, which could mean a rejection and a downtrend. So that is all I would look at for Square. And now I also want to look at DraftKings for puts. Because this company has been suffering, suffering for the longest time. They have earnings coming up on Friday. They've had a few good green days. Looks like there was a double bottom out here, which is probably the cause for the uptrend. But that's if you're referring to technical analysis. But then you zoom out, scroll down, and you see that this was a stock which was $50, $60, $70 just nine, 10 months ago. I have a daily resistance zone here around $16. And I also have plenty of reason for to be pessimistic about this stock because 
like I said, they are still struggling. If you check here, you can find out headlines about this. They always have potential catalysts for the stock to start rallying. But then they have things like this, reporting a quarterly loss. Again, loss widens. It's the same old story of this stock. It's been the same for a year. Positive news, expectations, hope, and then the reality hits. And it's just like time for puts and the stock keeps dropping. So we'll be looking at puts, even though it is trading above these two moving averages. RSI did just recently cross over, which was a good sign. But like I said, it's always the hope, which definitely kills you with DraftKings. So I'll be looking at DraftKings puts. And who knows, maybe this was a potential run up before it drops, which is probably what I expect, honestly. Last earnings sort of hard before earnings and then sort of even harder after earnings. Yeah, so it, to be honest, the next three, three, four days, Monday through Thursday, it could start selling off it anyway, just like it did here, and then drop. Because if you look here before earnings last time, three green days, then like four, five, six red days straight. Here we just had three green days. You could expect three, four red days in the run-up to earnings, then earnings is announced Friday, drop, and then you see us back at the levels we were what, in May. So that's my expectation with DraftKings. It's definitely leading towards the bearish side. I want to look at Sega now because they're trying to treat this monkeypox business. Sega has been pumping, but then it's now it started to sell off. Yesterday it dropped 23%. I'm guessing it's probably news to do with the fact that they're not expected to be able to treat the monkeypox. Who knows? I mean, I just wanted to put it out there that these kind of stocks, if you catch them on the right day, to the upside or the downside, you can make a lot of money. But of course, it's high risk, high reward. Another company which could potentially move like Sega next is MAIA, which I pointed out in the Discord yesterday. I pointed this one out. It was around 5.03. We'll look at the 15-minute chart for this. Somewhere here. Yeah, around 5.03. And it pumped all the way to the highs of $7.17 and then sold off again. So this one you can only trade shares on Robinhood. I don't know about any other platforms. But like I said, if you catch these at the right time, not that I encourage it, it's high risk, high reward. A 30% gain yesterday, if you take your money anywhere near 30%, you've definitely done well and you should be happy with that. So that's mainly it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, I do appreciate when you guys drop some feedback. So please comment on the video. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you'd like to see. Let me know if you've got expectations for this upcoming week. It's another big week for earnings. As you guys know, the market has been rallying recently. There could be a pullback coming, so beware of that as well. Don't get your hopes up too high. But it is nice to see us see some green constantly back to back. It's been a couple weeks now where we finished green, if you look at the weekly chart. And I'm definitely happy with that. Two green weeks in a row. But as I said, just make sure to share these videos with your friends. Get them out to more people. It definitely does help when it comes to the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you are new in regards to YouTube algorithm, please just hit that red button below. It is free. You can subscribe. It does not cost you anything and I would definitely appreciate it. It takes time to make these videos and help you guys out. So please do subscribe if you're new around here, as I've said. And then make sure you guys check out all my different socials, the TikToks, Twitter, Instagram, at The Wealth Prince. Also make sure you guys check out the Discord, the Royal Trading Academy. We're always active in there. Got it popping in there, so come and check that out. And then lastly, but not least, check out the Stock Option Starter Pack. That is 10 videos you guys have access to for life. So again, links in the description. Go check that one out. Thanks a lot for today's video. Have a great weekend. I go into making. You go into making. Game over.